The Airbus A320 has been the go-to plane for airlines around the world for over three decades. It's efficient, reliable, and instantly recognizable, but even the most iconic aircraft has its limits, and Airbus knows it. With air travel set to double in the next 15 years and climate goals getting stricter, the A320's time is coming to an end. So what's next? What kind of aircraft will replace the A320? In this video, we'll break down Airbus's bold strategy, explore the game-changing technology they're working on, and look Look at why this could completely reshape the future of aviation. Let's get started. The Airbus A320 isn't just a successful aircraft, it's one of the most important in aviation history. Since its debut in 1988, it has become the world's best-selling single-aisle airliner. Over 14,000 A320 family aircraft have been delivered, and more than 10,000 are still in active service today. Airlines across the globe depend on it for short and medium haul routes, and for decades it's been the go-to workhorse of commercial aviation. But despite its legacy, Airbus has started asking a tough question, how much longer can it carry the load? The A320 was revolutionary when it first came out. It introduced fly-by-wire technology to commercial jets, helping pilots operate the aircraft with computerized controls rather than purely mechanical systems. It was fuel efficient for its time, highly reliable and easy to integrate into airline fleets. Updates like the A320neo, new engine option, improved fuel efficiency by up to 20% compared to the original model, but those improvements are starting to plateau. Modern aviation is now facing entirely new demands, ones that the A320, even in its latest version, simply wasn't built to meet. Market pressure is another factor. Competitors like Boeing have long relied on their own legacy aircraft, but Airbus now sees an opportunity to break the cycle of upgrades and go for a clean sheet design. According to Guillaume Faurie, Airbus's CEO, this isn't just about building a slightly better plane, it's about preparing for the next generation of flight. He's aiming for entry into service of a new single-aisle aircraft by the mid-2030s, one that can reduce fuel burn by up to 30% and operate entirely on SAF. Fari sees this as a transitional aircraft, the last before hydrogen becomes mainstream. It's not an experiment, it's a necessary step to keep Airbus competitive and to meet environmental targets that are becoming less flexible by the year. There's also a question of technological ceiling. With each update to the A320, Airbus has squeezed out a little more performance, but engineers are hitting the wall. The A320neo already pushed the airframe to its limits with larger engines and aerodynamic tweaks. Further gains would require a completely different structure, one that supports newer materials, alternative propulsion systems, and digital production processes. So if the A320's time is winding down, what exactly is taking its place? Airbus isn't betting on one idea, they're working on two ideas. One runs on hydrogen, the other pushes sustainable fuel and next-gen engines to their limits. And both could reshape how we think about aircraft entirely. Let's explore what Airbus is working on behind the scenes. Instead of putting all their chips on one idea, Airbus is taking a two-track approach. The first track is a next-generation single-aisle aircraft designed to run entirely on sustainable aviation fuel. The second is a bolder step, a hydrogen-powered aircraft aimed at shorter distances with potential for long-term scaling. These are two very different aircraft, but together they reflect how Airbus is thinking about the next 20 to 30 years of flying. Let's start with the more conventional route. Airbus is currently developing a new narrow-body aircraft that looks to replace the A320 in the 2035 to 2040 window. This aircraft will be powered by the latest generation of engines, including CFM International's Open Fan Rise Demonstrator. Combined with aerodynamic improvements, lightweight materials, and optimized systems, Airbus is targeting a 25% to 30% reduction in fuel burn compared to today's most efficient narrow bodies. But here's the key detail. This aircraft will be fully compatible with 100% SAF, something current planes aren't built for. Most existing jets can only handle SAF blends of up to 50%. This next aircraft will be SAF ready from day one, meaning it won't just be more efficient, it'll be cleaner. Now, on to the more futuristic side. Airbus is investing heavily in hydrogen as part of its Zero E program. This isn't a speculative science project. They've already revealed three design concepts powered by hydrogen, and each one is being tested through simulation, lab prototypes, and flight demonstrators. The initial focus is on small 
smaller regional aircraft with a range of around 1,000 miles or 1,600 kilometers, perfect for short-haul markets like Europe or Southeast Asia. Hydrogen propulsion could cut carbon emissions to near zero during flight. The big challenge, though, isn't just building the plane, it's building the infrastructure to support it, storage, distribution, and airport retrofits. That's why Airbus plans to finalize engine selection and design details by 2025 or 2026 with an official launch around 2027 or 2028 and service entry by the late 2030s. Both of these projects are running in parallel, not in competition. Airbus knows that the transition to low emission aviation will take time and different regions will adopt at different paces. Hydrogen might not be ready for global rollout in a decade, but SAF is available now and can make an impact immediately. So Airbus is playing the long game with hydrogen while pushing a more practical but still transformative solution with the SAF ready narrow body. It's a flexible layered strategy, one that's more about evolution than revolution, but with the potential to change the entire industry over time. So we know what Airbus is building, but how exactly are they making it happen? The technology they're integrating isn't just new, it's never been seen on a commercial plane before. Let's break down the engineering that could define the next generation of air travel. What Airbus is working on isn't just a next-gen airliner, it's a complete reinvention of how an aircraft is built and operates. They're taking everything we've grown used to and flipping it with technology that was either experimental or theoretical just a few years ago. The goal isn't to tweak performance, it's to leap forward, and that leap starts with the engine. Airbus, in collaboration with CFM International, is developing an open fan engine that's unlike anything on commercial aircraft today. Instead of enclosing the fan blades in a casing like current turbofans, this design leaves the blades exposed. This change isn't just visual, it's functional. By dramatically increasing the bypass ratio, which is the amount of air that flows around the engine core, the open fan design achieves a bypass ratio of up to 60 to 1 compared to around 12 to 1 in today's best turbofans. The result, up to 30% lower fuel consumption, which also means lower emissions. Early testing has already delivered results that exceed expectations, and Airbus plans to mount a full scale demonstrator on an A380 test aircraft in the coming years. To match the engine's efficiency, Airbus is rethinking wing design too. Through its Wings of Tomorrow program, it's testing longer, ultra-light wings made from advanced composites. These wings are inspired by the Albatross, a bird known for gliding long distances with minimal effort. Airbus engineers are replicating that with wings that provide better lift and less drag. But longer wings usually create problems at crowded airports. They don't fit standard gates. Airbus solves this with folding wingtips that retract on the ground, similar to what we've seen on the Boeing 777X. It's a simple solution with a massive impact, better performance in the air without needing new airport infrastructure. Then there's how the aircraft moves on the ground. Airbus is developing an AI-powered taxi system called Optimate. This system allows planes to navigate airport taxiways without pilot input, using sensors, GPS, and predictive algorithms. It cuts fuel burn during taxiing, improves ground traffic flow, and reduces delays. This is part of a broader push to automate the entire flight life cycle, from gate to gate with minimal human intervention. Sustainability also plays a major role in how this aircraft is built. Airbus plans to use thermoplastics and advanced composites that are lighter, stronger, and recyclable. Up to 40% of the aircraft's structure could be made from renewable or recycled materials. That doesn't just lower emissions in flight, it makes the aircraft more sustainable to build and dismantle at the end of its life. These aren't minor upgrades, every part of this future aircraft is being re-engineered to meet strict environmental targets, reduce cost, and operate more intelligently. It's a clear move towards smarter, greener, greener, and more self-reliant planes. Now that we've looked at what Airbus is building and how, let's take a look at another plane that is getting so much attention from airlines that analysts even say it might be the short-term successor to the A320. While all eyes are on Airbus's futuristic concepts and hydrogen prototypes, something much quieter but just as disruptive is already underway. The A220-500, a stretched version of the A220 series, could end up being the aircraft that gradually edges out the A320. What started as Bombardier's C series is now quietly evolving into a key piece of Airbus's long-term single-aisle strategy, and the timing couldn't be better. The A220-500 hasn't even been officially launched, but 
but interest from airlines is already high. This variant is expected to seat around 170 passengers, putting it right into the operational spot of the A320. But unlike the older aircraft, the A220 is built from the ground up with composite materials, advanced aerodynamics, and modern Pratt & Whitney GTF engines. The result is an aircraft that's quieter, burns less fuel, and produces fewer emissions per seat. For short to medium haul routes, it's proving to be more cost effective than older models, even before factoring in environmental regulations. The internal debate at Airbus is clear. Do they continue investing in the A320, or do they gradually pivot production toward the A220 line? In reality, they may not have to choose. Airbus is already using the A321neo to handle higher capacity and longer range missions. That aircraft has become a runaway success, with over 5,000 orders and increasing demand for the LR and XLR variants, so Airbus could effectively split the market, push the A220-500 into the space traditionally occupied by the A320, and let the A321neo handle the top end. That would allow Airbus to phase out the A320 without a dramatic announcement or disruption to airlines. The A320 may just quietly slip out of production over the next decade without most people even noticing. So what's your take on Airbus's bold new direction? Drop your thoughts in the comments, we'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed this deep dive, make sure to give the video a like and subscribe for more aviation stories just like this. Until next time, safe travels and thanks for your time.